All right, in this video, tutorial number four on complex animations, and I got a request a while back on doing a Galaxy S7 animation, uh, something like this here. So we have that circle popping out. Um, we're not going to, I'm not going to show you how to make all the smoke rings and stuff, but what I want you to notice here, let me play it one more time. Notice how it expands out real fast, uh, but then it kind of slows down as it's expanding out. Watch it again. So boom, it pops and then it slows down as it reaches the outer circle there. Well, we can definitely achieve that in KOWP with complex animations. So let's go ahead and have a look. I have two circles here. Which one do you think is the complex animation and which one do you think is uh, the basic KOWP animations? If you look at this top circle here, it looks like it's expanding at the same rate and that fade is fading out um, pretty much at the same rate. Now, this one down here is a little bit different. It pops out, but then, you know, once it gets to a certain size, it starts to expand at a slower rate, but it's still getting bigger. This one is the complex animation. And I don't know if you can, well, hope, if you sit here and look at them, you will notice this one pops out a lot faster. Yet the length of time for each animation is the same. This is where complex animations become very beneficial because we can link multiple things together. We can make it scale and fade, and you can even make it rotate. You can make it shift left or right, and you can do all of this inside of one animation. So let's go ahead and go into KOWP and have a look. So some things I have set up first of all is duration. How long do I want the animation to last? So each animation is lasting two seconds. I have a one second delay between each loop. That way, you know, we have a little pause before it pulses again. You don't have to use those, but I just decided to incorporate those into this tutorial and I'll show you where those are used as well. So our basic circle animation, which is the top one here, it's a circle. Its size is 400 and I have a stroke set to it. And that's all I have going on there. But let's go to the animation for the basic circle animation. So I have two animations here. Now, we all know now up until this point, until we got complex animations, if you wanted to scale and fade something uh, for a particular item, you had to do two separate animations. Well, complex animations, it's gonna throw all that out the window. But still, I'm gonna go over the basic animation with you as well, so loop, scale out inverted that way it'll invert the scale out that's why you see it doing it the way it is here if you have this set to normal it's uh it's gonna go the other way you see what i'm saying so i want to do this inverted but we can fix all this with complex animations duration gv duration and then the delay is gv delay so i'm not gonna go back and show you these again but every single animation that i have here has the GV duration here and then the GV delay there. Ignore what these numbers say, trust the numbers that you actually see inside of the calculator. All right, so that's that one. And then the other animation to make it fade, I have loop fade out set to normal. And again, I had those same durations and delays there as well. So it's not a crazy setup. It's not overwhelmingly crazy for me to have two pieces here, but you know, if you want to throw a rotation in here or make it shift left or right or something like that, you'd have to add even more animations inside of this thing. So if we go back and look at the complex circle animation, same circle, same size, same everything. The only difference is the way I have the animation set up. And this is what we can do with one animation. Yes, I have it set to loop. Uh, and action is complex animation, ease is normal, and then the duration and delay are those same co codes I showed you earlier. Now, inside of the animator is where we actually achieve this thing of it popping out fast and then, you know, expanding at a slower rate once it gets to a certain size. Well, to adjust the size of something in your complex animation, you want to use scale X, Y. And as you can see, I have it used in three spots. Pay attention to the percents over here. I've mentioned this in my first three tutorials. So 0% represents the beginning of the animation. 100% rep represents the end of the animation. Um, depending on how long your duration is, I think I have mine set to 20, which equates to two seconds. Uh, we can think of that as being okay. Zero is when it first starts. Two seconds later at the end of the animation, that's where we want to be. So let's look at the beginning, 0%, scale XY set to zero. If you set this scale XY to zero, that means it's going to be 0% of its original size. Well, 0% of its original size is gonna be zero regardless. Basically, it's going to be teeny tiny. And this is how we can achieve the effect of scaling in or scaling out. So for the first 40% of my animation, before I even reach the halfway point of my duration time, 
I want this thing to go from 0% of its size to 75% of its original size. Now remember, our circle had a size of 400, right? Remember I showed you that back at the beginning, same circle. So it's going to go from a size of zero to 75% of 400, which is 300. But it's going to go from a size of zero to 300 before it even reaches the halfway point of this entire animation duration. Um, you can adjust this percentage here as well to make it even uh, animate slower or faster. And I'll show you that towards the end. So that's that. And then what's going to happen from 40% to 100% of our animation? Well, notice here, we still got 60% of our animation left. We have over half of our animation left to go from here to here. Well, all I want it to do is go from 75% of its original size to its original size. One, under scale XY, if you have it set to one, that's going to be uh, its original size. If you had it set to two, it would double. Three, it would triple. That's why I'm using decimals down here. This is 75% of its original size. This is 100% of its original size. So again, for the last 60% of our animation, we want to go from 75% of our original size to the full size. And what you may notice here is that it's getting, you know, from zero to 75% before we even reach the halfway point. Think about this. That's what's making it pop out fast. And then from here to here, it's going to continue to grow, but at a slower rate. I hope that makes sense. Now let's talk about the transparencies that you see here. This is how we can achieve the fade piece. Um, instead of us having a fade option, we just use transparency. So at the beginning of our animation, transparency, if we have it set to 100, you can pick anything between 0 and 100, but I have it set to 100% transparent. That means you cannot see it. So from 0% of our animation to 40% of our animation, we want our transparency to go from completely transparent to completely non-transparent. This is going to make it fade in, all right? Now, I just chose to put them inside of the same percentage groups for the sake of this tutorial, but you can mix all of these up in all sorts of percentages to get whatever effect you want. But this is how you achieve fade in a complex animation, adjusting the transparency. So, it's going from 100% transparent, we can't see it, before we even reach the halfway point, it's going to be completely visible. But then what's going to happen there from the 40% to 100%, it's going to fade back out. Because notice as I complete my animation, 100% of my animation, I want my transparency to be 100% transparent. This is what's going to make it fade back out. All right, so all of that stuff, really I'm only doing two things here. I'm doing a scale and I'm doing a fade, but you can incorporate rotations, um, offsets, making it shift up, down, left, right. You can do all of that inside of one piece. So hopefully, you know, if, if it didn't sink in, maybe I didn't explain that enough in the first three tutorials, a complex animation, notice underneath animation, I have just one thing in here. I don't have one set for scale and one set for fade. It's all inside of one piece. And um, you can get some really nice effects. Hopefully you see that, you know, with this one right here, where we're doing all that inside of one piece and we get that pulse where it slows down towards the last part of its animation. And to show you that even more, if I come and adjust the duration, uh, my, no, my global variable, whoops, let me come back to it. If I go set this to say four. So now the length of this animation is going to be four seconds. Hopefully you will see how the initial one grows out a lot faster, or this one down here. So boom, look at that and look at that one. See, this one's growing at a constant rate. This one pops out real quick and then it slows down. Yet these two circles have the same exact duration time for the, for the entire animation. Now, if we come in here one more time as well and go back to our complex animation. And suppose you want it to pop out even faster. Okay, so I'm gonna go down to my entries and I want this thing to scale out. Um, I'm not gonna change the actual, actual size of the animation as it scales out, but I want it to scale out even faster. So what we would do there is we would say, hey, we want it to occur even sooner than 40% of our animation. Say we want it to occur for the first 20% of our animation. This is going to make it pop out even faster. And notice it did separate it into different percentage groups to help keep things organized. So if I check that, save it, and go back to the home screen, you're gonna notice this thing pops out even faster and then it grows much slower. And that's by you adjusting those percentages, whether it be 0%, 20%, 40%, 100%, or anything in between any of those numbers. 
And there you have it. That's how you can uh, now take with complex animations. You can take scaling and fading or even more and throw it inside of one complex animation like we did here versus having to create separate animation pieces uh, like we've had to do, you know, um, up until the point when we just got complex animations right here recently. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.